Welcome to the definitive guide to scaling on Facebook. We're going to cover omni-channel targets, scaling into margin, why CPAs go up when you increase spend, the things that you need to really understand to not only scale spend, but ultimately scale results, scale quality and volume of good customers, and really have projectable, sustainable directional growth that you can use to double, triple, quadruple, or more your business every single year in a sustainable, reliable way. This is what I've done for many brands for many years, and I'm here to teach it to you right now. Let's go. First thing though, I just want to say thank you very much. You could be anywhere on the internet right now, and you've chosen to spend some time here with me and I want you to know that I very much appreciate that. And I'm gonna do my absolute best to make sure that this time is not only actionable, interesting, entertaining, but also incredibly useful as a resource for you today and in the future. I have spent a lot of time and money making a ton of mistakes and bringing lots of brands to exit. I'm here to teach you that stuff today what I've done wrong, what I've done right, and what you need to do to ultimately see sustainable, projectable, consistent, directional improvement. Remember, it is far, far better for your business to get 2% gains every week, which, by the way, gives you a near 3x lift by the end of the year. Then just try to get a 2x, 3x lift tomorrow, burn the whole shit house down in a week, and have to start all over again. Especially if you want investors, if you want to really get your cash flow going, if you want to get bankers to truly believe you or even begin to plan an exit for your business. Sustainable growth is the path to long term success. Let's dive into it right now. So, the first thing that we ultimately need to understand is the biggest mistake most people make. And that is trying to scale, spend, because they've hit their ROAS target. Now here's the thing, number one, ROAS is a bullshit number. MER is a fancy term for ROAS. We have to stop relying on this zero context data to make meaningful business decisions. I get it. You're saying, look, when I spend a dollar, I get three, but that's not really true because you also have email and then there's Google and then there's some affiliate stuff going on or influencer and then you have some subscription people coming in and then there's returns on your product and there's all this other stuff. The point is, if you have a three MER today, what channel are you going to make? What move on and why with how much money? The answer is, a number on a sticky note isn't going to give you that type of context if it's a return on spend or marketing efficiency because it's lacking actionable insight. So we're going to try to scrap all of that nonsense. The first step is starting to prioritize high value data and not chasing basically vanity metrics. The other side of this too is to remember that attribution is nonsense. The concept of attribution from digital marketing is a sales pitch from 25 years ago where digital advertising platforms at the time wanted to tell people, hey, we get credit for bringing you a sale. Because at the time, marketing on the internet was a crazy idea. So how is you as a salesperson try to get somebody to trust you? Well, look, we can take credit for all of these sales. Remember, attribution is nonsense because no user sees one ad and decides to make a purchase. Also, every impression is a retargeting one because I guarantee you, you don't have something that nobody's ever heard of before. If you're buying sneakers from my store, I guarantee you've seen shoes before. If you're buying a car, I guarantee you, you've seen a street before. Whatever your service or product is, people are seeing your ad because Facebook has chosen to show that impression to that user because of all of their behavior up to that point for years. And for the record, iOS 14 has nothing to do 
with this. So we can also throw out the excuse that iOS 14 is the reason we're struggling, which is also why broad targeting is the only target audience you should use. That's a whole other conversation for a whole other day. So let's get into scaling. Now, just because you hit your ROAS target doesn't mean you should spend an extra penny anywhere because you have no fucking clue where to spend it. Here's what's really important. Start to measure your blended CPA. How much can you acquire a customer for? Because you know, not acquire a customer, acquire a sale. Because you know that every sale either starts a lifetime, a lifetime value journey or continues it. So what is the allowable price that you're willing to spend to get somebody either started or continuing on their journey towards a lifetime value? And that number isn't just on Facebook, because remember, we can't always see all the data and attribution is bullshit. Because maybe you see 14 Facebook ads and then you go to Google and type something in, you go to the website and a week later an email converts you. Well, email drives all the sales. You can scrap everything else, except the well will run dry very quickly. You know that, but if your MER is a three because your email campaign did great, you're kind of shit out of luck with any actionable data. So what we're getting to is a blended CPA. Now, how we get this, number one thing I like to use, ecosystem ROAS doc, I'm here to pitch you on that stuff, just saying, you need to understand when I'm having good performance in my store, what percentage of my spend and what percentage of my sales seem to be coming from this, this specific channel. And when I'm there, what's the CPA on that channel for that offer, right? So now we're saying, well, over the last week, my average blended CPA, including search, email, Google, search, email, Facebook, and TikTok is at 25. Now, in those days where it was below a 25, my Facebook CPA also happened to be below a 50. Now, you might say to yourself, well, I need to get a sale below a 35 or I'm going to lose money. So you're afraid to spend more money on Facebook because your Facebook CPA is around like a 46, 48, but you're blended is $10 less than your acquisition cost allowable to get a sale. So at this point, what you've defined is that a less than $50 CPA on Facebook more or less equates to a mid $20 CPA blended across your entire store because of the lift, incremental lift, that comes from search and organic and TikTok and email and everything else. So this is where we get into the big trick, scale, into margin. If you have a $26 CPA blended and say Facebook is 50% of your spend and your Facebook is coming in at say a $45 CPA, what this means is if your target is at $35, you are coming in at 20 to 30% under your target. Now, what this really means is, because Facebook is roughly, say, 50% of your spend, you could probably nearly double your Facebook budget. But to start off with here, let's say your blended is coming in at a 25, your goal is at 35, and your Facebook says it's coming in at a 45. You can spend more to get a lower efficiency on your blended because the extra spend might not bring you in a linear path. You might not just maintain that efficiency as you come in. And we're going to get to that here in a minute too. But the most important thing is you've established there's a difference between what I'm willing to pay and what I'm actually paying. Now that difference, let's say it's 35%. Well, that means you can increase your spend on Facebook by 35%. And if you get zero extra sales, which isn't gonna happen by any means, you're still okay. Now, maybe you don't get any extra sales from Facebook, but you're getting a ton more site traffic. Your search volume is going to go up. Your email open rate improves. Your click-through rate on those emails improves. The number of email addresses that you're even sending emails out to improves. Oddly enough, also your organic reach on TikTok goes up. Why is that? Maybe because you're creating intent on the world's greatest intent creation device. And 
Even though you're running a conversion campaign, you are generating awareness and buying intent, pushing people further down the journey because Facebook is not only great at letting people know you exist, but it's also excellent at priming and conditioning people to ultimately take the action that you are optimizing for, even if Facebook isn't the reason that they do it on the last click. Because remember, attribution is bullshit. So the point here is maybe you get five more sales. Well, great, you can go more. Maybe you get 5% more sales or 10%. Maybe you increase your budget and your blended goes up a little bit. Maybe it goes up to 30. Well, you're still acquiring sales for $5 less than break even or your target, which means you can continue to spend. The most important thing here is we do not increase spend because we're at our goal. What we need to do is establish a margin. Now, maybe your goal is a $35 CPA and you're coming in at a $35. That means you can't increase spend. What that means is you need to increase efficiency. You need to get people for cheaper. If you can establish a margin, say we get it from 35 week over week down to 32 or 31.5, right? So what if we establish a 10% margin, right? Where our goal is 35, but we're getting people for 31.50. So we've got a 10% margin between our acquisition costs and we're actually getting people for. That means we can increase spend by 10%. And even if we don't get any more sales, which again is bullshit, we're going to get way more traffic. We're going to get way more direct. We're going to have better open rates. We're going to have more exposure on other organic channels. We're going to get more search volume. We're going to get more email addresses to send people out to. We are pouring fuel on the fire, raising everything because Facebook is an intent creation device and market research tool that pushes people further down the path because it knows how to prime and condition them to take an action because you've told it exactly what you wanted for probably a decade or more with every action you've taken on almost every website you've ever done, plus they have all your credit card data and they've known what every action you've taken on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, your DMs, your messenger, all of it. So the point here is scale into the margin. Don't say I've hit my objective and now I want to spend more. Your objective should be to be more efficient than you need to be so that you can add waste and then hopefully not lose 100% of that investment. This is what we call a total loss investment. And if that total loss is actually not a complete loss and you generate more revenue because of it, you can start to actually drive and measure incremental lift from running your channel the way it was designed to be used. This is how Facebook works, which again is why we use broad audiences, why retargeting is a luxury problem and why attribution is bullshit. Second point I wanna to get to, why do CPAs go up when we spend more money? Now, the simple argument you've heard forever is, well, you wanna give Facebook more money so it's willing to charge you more for it, which is bullshit. Actually, sometimes when you spend more money, your CPAs will go down. As a matter of fact, that is the very common thing that will happen when you set up your account properly. Your CPMs and CPAs will decrease as you increase your spend volume because you're getting higher quality data. And you're testing specifically to overcome this issue. Now, why do your CPAs go up on Facebook when you spend more money? There's a very simple reason. And I don't see just about anybody teaching this. So I'm going to do it right now. Your ad isn't designed to reach more people. I'm gonna draw you a quick little circle. This is the lookalike audience that your ad has made. Remember, every ad makes its own audience because every post ID understands who that ad should be shown to because every organic post and every ad has engagement. Facebook finds out who's most likely to see that ad, who's likely to respond positively to it, and then creates an audience of people that should see it. That's why maybe your Instagram reel gets a thousand views even though you only have 20 followers. Now here's the point. 
This is the available audience for your ad. Now, maybe that is a great audience for you to spend 500 a day. Now, what happens when you try to spend 1,000 a day is that ad begins to reach out to an audience outside of the best available inventory. This is where you're getting people for the goal, but once you start to spend out into all of this universe because you're spending more money than this ad can actually handle, what happens? You force a lower quality experience on users, which increases your CPMs, and because now you're reaching newer people who are lower qualified that our Facebook is trying to start a journey with in ultimately converting to your product, what happens? It's less efficient at driving a sale so your CPA goes up. How do we overcome that issue? Well, very simple. We make several ads. Now, if we have five ads, there's a lot of people that these ads can go to. Each one of them theoretically can handle a little bit of spend, but combined, there's some overlap, and these people were going to convert super easy, which is why when you run broad, retargeting happens anyway, and that's a good thing. Why first-time impression rate is not a goddamn thing you should be worried about, and anybody that says so is dead wrong, because what we're actually looking for is this ad hit somebody, and that ad hit somebody, and that ad hit somebody, and they're in this little crossover section right here, and look at that. They converted for super cheap. That's a great thing, not a bad thing. Again, Anybody whining about first time impression rate is dead fucking wrong. Now, what this ultimately means is as we try to increase spend, each one of these ads will start to do a bit more work. Now, there's going to be an, uh, an efficiency improvement as these ads all go because Facebook's going to find how do we get this ad and this ad and this ad to somebody to convert this group of people, right? How do we make that happen? Right, so ultimately we get really good sales here, we get some really good sales here, right, in these two sections, and now, boom and boom, we got some amazing efficiency. What happens when we spend more money, we get more data? Our CPA goes down, because Facebook is better and better at finding these people. And our CPMs go down because we're able to better match good ads to reach more individuals. This is five ads in a broad ad set. There's going to be retargeting. There might be some first-time impression ratio nonsense going on. But you know what? The more money we spend, the more stable this is going to be. And over time, our cost of advertising is going to come down. That's how machine learning works. That's how data works. That is one of the biggest things that I see almost every expert out there completely fucking missing. And for the record, this isn't theory. This has been confirmed with over $10 million in case study spend that I've done with the machine, with the uh, measurements and the product team at Facebook for machine learning for the auction and delivery team. This is how Facebook works. And here's the other thing. That's not a secret. Facebook's been telling us this for years, right? So here's the big thing. Why do CPAs go up? Because you're forcing your ad to reach new people. Here's the other thing. That increase in CPA isn't permanent. Once Facebook understands how to convert these other people, or you get a few ads that can touch the same person, your first time impression ratio, whatever, you're going to get better, which is why we don't need to worry about retargeting which is why we should also focus on one specific offer, which is why we should only have one campaign, which is why we should have just one or two primary ad sets where our best ads are going after people. Because then Facebook is able to map out the customer journey, the user experience of somebody on Facebook to ultimately get them to drive that ultimate action. Because Facebook isn't trying to make every impression make a sale. Facebook is trying to condition and prime the user to want to take that action the way that they've told Facebook they behave over the last decade. Maybe you have told Facebook for the last 10 years that when it comes around time for Valentine's Day, when you start to see videos of happy people around the 1st of February, and then you see some good static images a week out with a sale, on that 10th or that 15th impression and that third click, you're, you've got a 90% chance of actually making a purchase. Well, now 
because I've done this to you for a decade. I know how to condition you to make a sale because Facebook is trying to deliver intent, right? And trying to do market research and ultimately Facebook trying to give the end user a positive experience. The point here is this is how Facebook works. And we're trying to scale spend. We need to scale into that margin. One of the easiest ways of establishing that margin is by giving a few options for Facebook to make. And then we do testing to try to improve the quality of those options. Absolutely. And then you get to the point where when you spend more money, you might get a small increase in CPA immediately, and then it levels off, and then it starts to come back down. I've done this repeatedly for years. The most extreme case of this was I had one brand where we were spending 3000 a day at a 60. After about nine months, we were spending 50000 a day at a 15. We had legitimately increased the spend by nearly 20x. And the CPA went down 75% as a result of it. This is what I'm talking about. You can absolutely do this. And by the way, I've done that dozens and dozens and dozens of times. More data is a good thing. Sometimes the biggest mistake advertisers make is they pull back and spend when results are bad. They say, hey, Facebook, you don't have enough data to be successful right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you less data. They say, well, you know, Facebook's costs are going up on my email and Google are really good. So I'm going to try to spend more money at email and Google. What happens? You see a great lift, you pull back and spend, and then seven to 10 day, late days later, email and Google just drops entirely. Why? Because you completely saturated your entire high intent pool that was maybe going to convert anyway. You didn't feed that bucket anymore. You basically drain the entire bucket, drop no more water in. You let all the blood from the stone and you're complaining when it doesn't print money anymore. Whose fault is that? It's not Facebook. So here's the last point that I want to get to. You have to understand omni-channel targets. And this is the big, big thing. Your Facebook CPA, a lot of people, a lot of people are saying, well, I'm running different campaigns and doing X, Y, and Z. The Facebook CPA attribution doesn't work. And, you know, all this other stuff, iOS 14, excuses, excuses, excuses. None of that is relevant. Here's the point. When you're seeing good results for a week or multiple weeks, when you have some good weeks, some bad weeks, what does your media mix model look like? What percentage of spend is going to Facebook? And what is the CPA of Facebook for your flagship offer? If you can recreate that situation, how likely are you to, again, recreate good outcomes? I'm going to give you a hint. It's extremely likely. It becomes a situation of not trying to chase the dragon and burn the shithouse down in flames by throwing all the money at the thing that works and then complaining when it doesn't work anymore. It's about creating an environment that is going to continually deliver you the optimal situation for success and then improving the volume of that opportunity for success. And it really comes down again to the primary equation that is of absolute most importance in growth marketing and acquisition. CPA plus COGS, parentheses, divided by LTV. How much does it cost for you to acquire a customer plus produce the goods or services? Versus how much is that customer worth to you? Now, remember, every sale is not necessarily acquiring a customer. And then some people say, well, we're just focusing on new customer CPA. Great. You're solving for one third of the equation. That's wonderful. But you're probably ignoring a lot more important things. And let's be honest. If you were good at all of that other stuff, that's great. But very, very few people have anything close to 100% rebuy rate. If you're getting 20% of customers to come back and do what, come back and spend more money, you're doing pretty good. So why not spend more money to get 25 or 30? Why well, say that if a customer buys from you and they don't buy again, fuck them. Is that a really good business model? Do you think McDonald's got successful because they said, once you buy a Big Mac, we never need to market to you again? Of course not. Of course not. That's fucking ludicrous. But that's also 
one of, if not the most popular line of thinking I've seen forever that, well, we're gonna exclude purchasers and we're gonna focus on new customer acquisition costs and we're gonna focus all these people down the funnel because we got them. Once we got them, we don't need a market to get them again. That's bullshit. And here's the other thing that's really important. Facebook knows what it is that you're trying to do, right? Because Facebook understands what you're trying to ultimately accomplish is to drive a conversion. Well, where are we getting the most efficiently? And if that person is likely to convert on their own, great. But Facebook also knows how often is somebody likely to buy? How do they know that? Maybe they have a decade of your purchase behavior and your engagement behavior and understanding how often you do things. If you buy a pair of sneakers by clicking on a Facebook ad, do you think Facebook's now gonna smash you with a shit ton of other ads for shoes? Wouldn't that give you a really shit experience on the platform? Have you ever noticed that once you buy things, you do see some ads from really bad brands, but all the good brands, those ads just seem to disappear. Now, the first immediate uh, idea might be, well, they're excluding purchasers, right? Adidas ads aren't being shown in your feed because you bought a, a New Balance sneaker and Adidas is excluding you from that purchase conversion pool? No! Facebook knows that you've completed a purchase objective with a whole ton of metadata on that product. And over the last decade, it's taken you at least six months to two years to be interested in that product again. Now, there are some products we can buy it over and over again, right? Especially CPG, especially some, a lot of clothing stuff like shirts and whatnot. So you might see those ads all the time. But you have to remember, Facebook's number one objective is the end user experience. So when we're looking at omni-channel targets, we have to ultimately see how do we recreate really good situations for success? What is the balance of investment across all of our channels to acquire that success? And then how do we use uh, that information to amplify that success? And really the way that we do that is we see spend, volume, and revenue by channel with that channel's reporting. Yeah, yeah. I use platform data, 100%. Why? Because that's the information the platform has. Why try to outsmart the platform by using information it's not privy to that isn't how it's deciding to make decisions and then try to amplify it? You're undermining your tool of success, which kind of sounds like hacking Facebook, which kind of sounds like something we know doesn't work which kind of sounds like the same thing that everybody's complaining about for years, which also kind of sounds like the thing that most really successful brands don't bother with. So here's the ultimate goal. Here's the big picture. You need to establish a margin on CPA for your flagship product. You need to drop the distractions of three or four offers and a bunch of audiences and retargeting and all of this other nonsense. Remember, retargeting is completely unnecessary because every impression is retargeting. Even the very first impression on cold prospecting is being shown to somebody because Facebook has determined that that person is already apt to want to respond to it. And if you have advanced matching, your cold audience first impression might very well be the 20th ad somebody sees over the week for that type of product because they're seeing it from Nike, from New Balance, from Reebok, from Sakani, and from Converse. You're not special, but you can absolutely maximize on the investment that other people have made. So we need to understand what our margin is and then spend into it. Realizing that as we spend into it, while we might not get a sale directly from the platform, which is probably also total bullshit, we're going to see a lift in search volume, in direct traffic, in organic reach, because, hey, more people know about us, more people are responding positively to us, and more people are going to respond positively to our messaging. We're going to get higher open rates and more email addresses, because, again, we're driving positive and uh, perception of the brand. If your ads are good, by the way. By the way, if your ads are bad, you're just trying to make a sale all the time, you're going to set your entire business on fire. 
right? Every conversion ad is also a brand awareness ad because ultimately what we're trying to do is make people feel good about our advertising and want to deal with us as a brand. This goes back hundreds of years. The real issue here was there was a point in time where online marketing wasn't sophisticated enough to take this in. And there are extremely popular channels like email and search and others where they don't have that sophistication over their business model isn't about the end user experience for Google. They want you off of Google as fast as possible. Their goal is that you land on Google and five seconds later you leave. If Facebook had every user log on to Facebook, see an ad and leave in five seconds, they'd be out of business. Align your goals with theirs and you're gonna be really good. So establish that margin. Remember why your CPAs are growing. Solve for that. And ultimately, measure your omni-channel effects of spending. Make targets for those and truly begin to establish, test, and plan for incremental lift. You solve for that problem. And instead of trying to find the next audience or the next hack or running 50, 60, 100 creatives a week to try to just maintain your spend, you're going to be seeing consistent, projectable growth week over week, month over month, year over year, which is going to be the big difference between you struggling in your six and seven figure brand and you talking to investment bankers about an exit strategy in three years. Is your business a paycheck or a retirement plan? Think about it. YouTube said you might like some of these things. Go ahead and give me a sub. I think it's over this way. Anyway, I hope you all have a lot of fun. I know this was a helpful. I had a great time. I'll see you on the internet. Bye.